Hi, first grade artists. Today we are going to be making some 3D frogs, and I'm going to show you step by step how we're going to do that. So let's begin. First of all, I sent your parents a link to a template of a frog that looks like this. So what you can do is just go ahead and print that out, and then you have the basic outline to begin with. If you don't have a printer, what you can do is you can take a piece of paper like this and you can fold it this way across like this. Now what's really important is when you do the drawing, you need to draw along the seam here. So you're gonna do something such as this where you draw a basic outline of a frog and then when you cut and when you cut it out, it will open up and you'll have a full frog. Okay. So we now have our basic template here. And so what we really want to do is we really want to build and expand um, on the frog, okay? And put lots of lines and details on there. I also put a link to inspire you of the different examples of lines that we have used here, okay? So there's two sheets here. So there's this here, which gives you some different ideas about some different lines and patterns you can do. And I also put this sheet here, and this will tell you about the different lines and patterns that you can do, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. So um, as artist choice, you can start with pencil or Sharpie. Personally, I prefer to start with the Sharpie because it's really hard when you're adding all of those details to really um, do it um, in pencil and then go back over it. But I'm gonna let that be artist choice, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, if we look, we see there's some symmetry here, right? Like this uh, leg looks like this leg here. So the goal is if you do something on this leg, you should do the exact same thing on this leg. So let me show you what I mean. So maybe I'm gonna start and I'm gonna go ahead and build my pattern and I'm gonna do three circles here. Now, since I did three here, what should I do over here? Exactly right. I'm gonna do my three circles over here as well. And so you're gonna to try to get it the best that you can. Does it have to be perfect? Absolutely not. You're just gonna do your best artist work on there, okay? So then um, I have that there. So then maybe I'm gonna come in like that. So then what do I need to do? Come back over here. I find it's easier to do one step at a time, go back and forth versus later on try to track what you did because that can be kind of confusing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm building my pattern, okay? And so maybe I wanna do a line like that. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep go ahead and I'm going to keep building using different lines and shapes and you can repeat things. You don't have to do um, the same thing. You can be really creative and do whatever your imagination tells you you want to do. So maybe I'll do a curved line here. Maybe I want to do double lines here. Um, maybe I'm going to do a happy face type line here. And so what you're doing is you want to build, um, you keep building this intricate pattern. Okay. So, um, you're just building out. Okay. And you can even go back in and add more details. So here, maybe I'm going to add some dots. So my suggestion is you first you build your pattern um, using the black Sharpie. And then you can go ahead and you can fill in if you want to do it um, with color. Now you can use a variety of mediums here. So you could use um, Sharpie if you wanted to color it in. You could use crayon if you wanted to color it in. Or you can use oil pastels. Or you can do watercolor. It's really up to you. Or you could do a mixed medium piece. So for example, if I'm going to do, maybe if I wanted to do Sharpie, I'm going to color that in 
there. Now the advantage of using crayon is that we know that we can color over the Sharpie and we don't have to worry about um, not being able to see what we did. So I can take a crayon and I can color over what I did. Or again, you can paint or you can use oil pastels. So let's fast forward and pretend that we are done and our frog looks something like this. Okay, so we have our frog and then of course the next step would be to cut it out like so. Okay, so if you want to make, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a leaf. And so here is the leaf that I did here. Okay, and I'll show you how to make the leaf in a second, but I'm going to show you how to attach it. Because you want it to be 3D, so when you're attaching it, you see how the back legs are here? So instead of like stretching it out, you're actually going to push in your legs so that it pops out. And then the front ones, you're actually going to push in. And that, my friends, is going to create that 3D effect that you want. Okay? Now, to draw a basic leaf shape, if we look here, you can just take a piece of paper here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead, and you want to make it big. It has to be bigger than the frog, otherwise the frog's not going to fit on there. So you take a whole big piece of paper there, and I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm just going to do a curved line down. And then I'm going to come up here and do a curved line down. And then we know leaves have veins, so I'm going to go ahead and do a line down the middle. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just do some diagonal lines. And then again, you could paint the leaf, you can water color it, you can use crayon for the leaves, whatever you choose to do. And when you are done, you will have an awesome three-dimensional leaf. This is a great project that you can do with your family, you can do with your friends, and you can make an art gallery. And please send me those pictures because I would love to see the amazing art that you've done. Thank you so much and have a great day.